Enjoy this clip with Gentry, the Mormon, as Ray shares the gospel with him, and then I'll catch back up with you at the end of this interview after Gentry makes some very interesting comments. Okay, what do you think happens after someone dies? you think there's an afterlife? I definitely do think there's an afterlife. I think we're on this life here on this earth for a purpose, and I think that God has a greater plan for us after this life. What's that plan? Um, I think, I think, it, I really think the, the, how we're put on this earth for a test, and I think almost a test in how well you are and how good of a person you are actually determines how you do in the afterlife, I personally think. So now you think there's a heaven? And we're all heading for heaven, everybody? Yes, I definitely think so. I mean, so bad people go to heaven? No, I think there's an outer darkness. I would call outer darkness or as hell, as other people would put it. So are you a Mormon? Yes, sir. So how do you become a Mormon? A Mormon? Well, my parents were, and I was just born into it. With my morals and values from my parents, they led by example, and that's how I think I am right now. So you think there is a hell? Yes, I definitely think so. And you call it outer darkness? Outer darkness. So does almost everybody go to heaven? Does everyone go to heaven? No, I definitely wouldn't think so. Like I said, I think we're put on this earth as a test and as your morals and how good of a person you are. And I think when it does come to that day where you die, it's a judgment day and I think it's God's call. So I mean, how are you doing with this test? How, are you, you going to make it? <laughs> oh, geez, I hope so. I mean, I'm trying every day to be the person that I want to be with my goals and values in life. And I mean, I hope I can make it just like my family and everyone else is. So you're striving to make it? I'm, yeah, exactly. Every day, I definitely think so. Are you a good person morally? Morally, I would definitely hope I was. I mean, I set my standards high and I like to reach my goals high. And I mean, See how high your standards are. How many lies have you told in your life? How many lies have I told in my life? Yeah. Would it be one, ten, a hundred? Oh, geez, if I could put a number on it, I'd be almost ashamed of the number. I mean, so I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I lie a lot at all. I'm not saying that at all. Like I said, I set my values high. and that's You have lied? Yes, sir, yes, sir. So what do you call someone who tells lies? Someone that tells lies, I'm getting, I guess you call him a liar. Have you ever stolen anything in your life, even if it's small? Yes, sir, I have. What do you call someone who steals things? A thief. So what are you? <laughs> a thief. No, a lying thief. A lying thief. <laughs> now, have, you ever used, have you ever used God's name in vain? No, sir. Okay. Now, Jesus said if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Um, I definitely think there's some pretty attractive women out there and I can't say I haven't. So you have? Yes, sir. So you've committed adultery in your heart? Yes, sir. So, Gentry, by your own admission, you're a lying thief and an adulterer at heart. So how are you going to make it to heaven? I think God has a plan for us and I think that there's a plan of repentance. And I mean, if you're willing to change, and I think it's all in your heart. If you're That's all you've got to do is repent. Yes, sir. Transfer that to a court of law. Imagine if you have violated civil law. Maybe you robbed a bank and you raped a woman, okay? And you say, Judge, I know I'm guilty, but I tell you, I'm really sorry and I'm not going to do it again. He's not going to let you go. You've violated the law. You must be punished. Of course you should be sorry. You've done wrong and of course you shouldn't do it again. So repentance can't save you in civil court and it's not going to save you on judgment day. How can it? God's not unjust. You must make sure that justice is done. Right. And so we're in big trouble. You're in big trouble on judgment day. So it seems to me... We've looked at four of the Ten Commandments, you've broken three of them, you're guilty on Judgment Day, that you'll be heading for out of darkness, a place called hell. Wouldn't that be true? Yeah, but I think I definitely, my, it's a, your willingness, I think, your willingness to serve God, and if you serve God in the right way, I think He will, he will forgive you. But remember, that won't happen in a court of law. Judge, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, and I'll serve you really well. He's going to say, you've violated the law, you must be punished. And the Bible says, no liar, no thief, no adulterer, no fornicator will inherit the kingdom of God. So you're in big trouble. What are you going to do on Judgment Day? Oh, jeez, if you put it that way. You know how you keep saying jeez? What's that short for? What's that? You know you keep saying jeez? What does that mean? I just had her in my family because we never take the Lord's name in vain. So it sounds like Jesus, half of Jesus, doesn't it? Yes, sir. So how are you going to be saved from being cast into hell? What can you do? Repent. No, won't help you. How so? You tell me how so. Well, we've just been through that. Remember, court of law, repentance won't help you. You think so? Yeah, absolutely. So what, is your, what do you tell me what your plan is to get to heaven? Okay. 
2,000 years ago, Jesus suffered and died on the cross. He took the punishment for yes, the sin sir. of the world, okay? God's a judge. You and I are criminals in his eyes. We've violated his law. We've broken the Ten Commandments. We're heading for a place called hell, God's prison without parole. All liars are their part in the lake of fire. Lying is very serious in the sight of God. So is theft and so is adultery. But Jesus paid our fine on that cross. He took the punishment for the sin of the world. That means God can legally forgive our sins. He can commute our death sentence. He can allow us to live because Jesus paid our fine in full and rose from the dead and defeated death. So what you've got to do is not just repent, you've got to repent and trust in the Savior. Yes, sir. Not in your own goodness. You know how you're trusting your goodness? I'm a good person. I'll make it to heaven. I've got to do this. No, no. You've got to give up and trust in the mercy of God alone. Okay? Does that make sense? That definitely makes sense. So you've got to repent and trust in Him. Now, it's very interesting. At this point, most good Mormons who know Mormon doctrine would say, Amen! Way to go! to everything Ray said that Jesus came to, to die on the cross and to pay the price for sin. So what do you do with a Mormon who says, I already believe all of that? Well, the truth is, the Mormon God is different than the God of the Bible, and so is the Jesus of Mormonism and the Gospel of Mormonism different than the true Gospel and the true Jesus of the Bible. But here's two things to remember. One, this is likely the very first time that Gentry was confronted with the law and saw his sin as exceedingly sinful, which is what the law does. That makes a big difference. To show a person they can't possibly work themselves out of the hole they've created by their sin. And secondly, the sovereignty of God. We can trust that because he's heard the gospel and understands his sin, God grants him a place of genuine repentance and will lead him into the truth of scripture and away from the false teachings of the LDS Church. Not in your own goodness. You know how you're trusting your goodness? I'm a good person. I'll make it to heaven. I've got to do this. No, no. You've got to give up and trust in the mercy of God alone. Okay? Does that make sense? That definitely makes sense. So you've got to repent and trust in Him. And so many people who in, in both the Catholic Church, Protestant Church, and a lot of like Mormons, etc., are trusting in their own what's called works righteousness. They, they think they have to do something to earn everlasting life, and they can never do it. Only thing you do is trust in the mercy of God, and that's by faith in Jesus Christ. When you do that, when you repent and trust alone in Him, you'll be born again. God will give you a new heart with new desires. You know the truth, and the truth will make you free, okay? So you're telling me it's your willingness to serve God after you've committed a sin? Your willingness to give up your heart towards Jesus Christ. Because like you said, if He suffered on the cross for us, He suffered everything for us. So is that what you're saying here on earth? If you give up and your heart is willing to change, then you can be repentant? No. It's just a slight difference between what I'm saying and what you're saying. Okay, okay. The little leap that you're trying to make to heaven by your own good works is wider than the widest part of the Grand Canyon. You're not going to make it only thing you can do is trust in God's mercy. So it's got nothing to do with me serving God, nothing to do with me doing anything. Salvation is a free gift. This is what the scriptures say, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man boast. Okay? So just fling yourself upon Jesus. Trust alone in Him. Okay? Okay. Learn how to share your faith biblically. Each week, we send out a free ministry update, and it contains a short video clip. Ray finds colorful characters, he witnesses to them, and then I chalk talk the clip. Here's some samples. Do you believe in God? Of course. I believe God actually learns through us. That, there's a heaven right here. Multiple times a day, God hugs me. What planet are you living on? I have no problem standing before the Lord as I am. After seeing new clips each week, and understanding the biblical principles behind them, you will end up saying, I could do that. There's no charge for the update. Just go here and sign up here, and we'll send it to you every week. For God so loved the world that He gave His only forgotten Son. Also, while you're there, check out the School of Biblical Evangelism. The School of Biblical Evangelism is a full-blown online evangelism course. It'll help you overcome your fears It'll help give you the answers to the hundred most commonly asked questions and objections to the Christian faith.
You'll find details on livingwaters.com.